So this um, section is called there's policy and there's good policy, uh, which we are aware of. So it's one thing to have a policy, but what makes it a good policy? Um, a policy really is a plan of what, what to do and it's agreed to officially by a group of people who have the authority to do so. Um, the definition of a policy is a set of ideas or a plan of what to do in a particular situation that has been agreed to officially by a group of people, a business organisation, a government or a political party. That's from Cambridge Dictionary. So that's the definition of what a policy really is. It's a mandatory statement of principles guiding an organisation's operations and decision making. And it has binding statements included in it that apply across the organisation and support the organisation's course of action for the foreseeable future. And we know it's really important, obviously, to include um, review dates in policy. So we know how long this policy has been in place and when it needs to be reviewed. A good policy states principles and outcomes. It's focused on action, states what is to be done and by whom, so there's no confusion about who was meant to do which part. It should make administration easier and it enables an organisation's core business to be more efficient and effective. Now, one thing that we want to be really mindful of when we're making policy is its compatibility with Human Rights Act. So we need binding statements that apply across the organisation, but we need policy to be flexible enough to have a human rights approach. Now, this is a policy cycle, uh, and I know the wording, words on that cycle could be a little clearer. Hopefully you can make it out and we will be sending the slides out where you'll be able to make it a bit, a bit bigger for yourself after the, after the webinar. But this policy uh, cycle is used across public service. So some of you may be familiar uh, with it and it includes the key steps to policy development in theory. Now, one thing I want to, um, to make clear is that for some who are not involved a lot in policy making, policy making might seem quite um, rigid, structured, um, a set of rules, it's really actually, policy making is actually quite messy and it might not follow this, um, this to the T. There, there'll be jumping around, there'll be consultation, there'll be going back and reworking something. Um, for it, It's not as logical as this cycle makes it out to be, although that would make things a lot easier probably. It's quite messy. So typically we start with identifying an issue. That's really the first stage in policy making. And then we're moving on to policy analysis um, and policy instrument here. I just want to clarify that policy instrument means the mechanisms we use to enact policy. So in the context of talking about domestic and family violence and a policy addressing that internally, policy, uh, an example of a policy instrument would be the leave that we might allow someone in a domestic and family violence situation. So um, they're, they're really talking about the mechanisms which enact the policy. Um, in the consultation part of this cycle, um, specific to, to domestic and family violence policy that we're speaking about today, it's important to note that Workplace Health and Safety Act requires employers to um, consult around policy. So that's an important um, thing to note in developing uh, domestic and family violence policy. Not only is it good practice to involve employees um, in development of policy, but it's actually a requirement. It's an obligation for you um, in, in this particular um, situation. Um, not all steps will be as relevant as others. To some organisations, um, particular parts will be quite heavy and you might be able to move on quickly um, in other parts of this policy cycle. But it's useful to consider all parts of the cycle regardless as a guide of what to move on to next. It's quite a logical and sequential way of looking at your policy development. All right, so what's policy versus procedure? And this is an important thing to consider when we're looking at policy making. So policy um, differ from rules of law, which can compel or prohibit particular behaviours. Policies guide towards actions that are most likely to achieve the outcomes that we desire. Um, so policy versus guidelines. Guidelines aren't mandatory, they're a guide. Um, when we're looking at policy and procedure, one can't exist without the other. So they really work hand in hand. 
A policy includes guiding principles, reflects principles, vision and mission. It's looking at the why and the what, whereas the procedure is looking at who, when, um, how, how's it going to happen? A policy identifies the issue and the scope of the policy and a procedure establishes your steps. How are we addressing, how are we responding to this? Um, there's no hard and fast rules. A procedure is stricter in nature and follows a specified set of rules. And really we need that to ensure that no one slips through the cracks. So we need to be really quite um, clear on who is doing what, in what time frame, how will we be implementing it? Um, and I think probably the real takeaway from this slide is that they, they are complementary to one another. A policy cannot exist without procedure. And for any procedure, we really need a, a, a guiding policy. Okay, workplace policy checklist. Now this is from the New South Wales um, Industrial Relations website if you're looking for um, this on the web. Um, and it's fairly self-explanatory. These are the things we want to keep in mind. I'll just see someone says. Um, so we need to ensure that it's consistent with the values of your organisation and that you comply with employment and other associated leg legislation. Um, an important thing to note here is that your organisational policy does not trump legislation. So you need to ensure that you're complying with relevant and associated legislation. Um, demonstrate that the organisation is operated at an, in an efficient and business-like manner. Ensure uniformity and consistency in decision-making and operational procedures. Add strength to the position of staff if any legal action arises. Save time when a new problem can be handled quickly and effectively through an existing policy. Foster stability and continuity. Maintain direction of the organisation even during periods of change. It's a framework for business planning. Assist in assessing performance and establishing accountability. And clarify functions and responsibilities. I know I've gone through that quite quickly. We will send these slides to you, so don't, don't um, scribble them all down too quickly. You'll get them. Okay. Let me just skip through to here. Yeah, this is what I want to look at. Now, this is a, um, the Workplace Gender Equality Agency developed this graphic, graphic representation of the key elements of a workplace response. Um, so what we're keeping in mind here is what is paramount is safety of the victim and their family. I'm just having it in the chat, is that something you put in there, Michael? Great, okay, thank you. Um, Michael's just dropped in uh, a document that we're going to be looking at very soon. Um, so this equality, uh, gender equality um, agency wheel is really good to keep in mind because it has some key elements. I'm gonna jump back to this slide to look at these a little more closely. Oh, I'm doing that thing again. Here we go. These are the four elements we really want to keep in mind. These are the four elements that are on that wheel. I've just jumped back here because we can see the, the font a little more clearly. Um, lead with prevention. Support those affected by domestic and family violence. So uh, Sean had mentioned before, we don't want to take a punitive approach to um, those who are being affected by domestic and family violence. We're, we're looking to support them, uh, not add to the burden they, they already have on their shoulders. Uh, foster a workplace environment that supports employees to stop using violence and abuse. And fourth, we want to recognise and respond and refer employees uh, to, who use domestic and family violence. So I think um, it's important to note that while we are rapidly learning more about domestic and family violence and the experience of domestic and family violence, what is emerging and what we're, we're trying to learn more about is um, those who are using violence. And um, as we learn more about it, we'll, we'll have more content to, to put into our policies. Um, but we really wanna keep that in mind as far as developing a workplace response to domestic and family violence. We're holding both supporting those affected by domestic and family violence and, and figuring out how, how do we respond to those who are using violence? 
So there's a few dot points in this wheel that um, I think it would be really useful for you to come back and, and consider when you are looking at your own organisational policy. There's quite a few things in there um, and we don't have time to go into all the specifics um, in that wheel, but I really do encourage you to um, have a look at the MCC toolkit for employees who use domestic and family violence. Um, we will send out this slide so you'll get to have a look at this wheel a little more closely. But um, I, I really do recommend having a look at that what, alongside your policy development and just seeing where the gaps might be and where you might be able to um, provide some more support.